I'm gonna show you guys the easiest way to do integration by parts. So check this out. This is the DI method. So here's my first example. We have the integral of x to the second power times sine of 3x. Well, unfortunately, u substitution wouldn't work because if we let u equals to the inside function 3x, the derivative of that is just a 3. We cannot cancel with dx to the second power. So let's give integration by part a try. And this is going to demonstrate the first step of using the di method. The idea of the integration by parts is we are going to look at the original integral and then break down into two parts. One part we are going to differentiate, the other one we are going to integrate. So we will put down the d and the i. D stands for the part we are going to differentiate, and the i stands for the part we are going to integrate. And we should always try to write this down first. Figure out which part shall we integrate, because it's usually harder to integrate, right? And then also on the side, we should put a plus, minus, plus, minus, and maybe a couple more. But then let me just put on a few of them to get ready. Make sure you have the plus, minus, plus, minus alternate like that on the side, just to get ready. All right, we have two functions, x to the second power times sine of 3x. And let me tell you, we are going to integrate sine of 3x. First of all, we know this is doable. We can totally integrate sine of 3x, right? And then I will just differentiate x to the second power. And now let's just get to work. Let's integrate sine of 3x. The integral of sine is negative cosine, and the input is the same, 3x. But then we have to divide it by the derivative inside. 3x, the derivative of that is 3, so we have to divide by 3. So I will put down a 1 third, like that. And let me do it again. Let's integrate negative 1 third cosine 3x. And let's look at the function part first. The antiderivative of cosine is positive sine, right? And the input stays the same, the 3x stays the same. But then it was positive sine, so this negative will stay the same. And well, we have to divide by the 3 again. So 1 over 3 divided by 3, we have 1 over 9. This is the small u substitution in our head, okay? So let's do this again just for practice. Antiderivative sine is negative cosine. So let me put down cosine first, but then negative times this negative will get positive, okay? And the input once again stays the same, but then we have to divide by the 3 again. 1 over 9, and then we divide by 3, we get 1 over 27, okay? And it seems that we can just keep on going forever. So let's pause it right here and move to the d column. So we are looking at x squared, and we are going to differentiate that. The derivative of x squared is just 2x. And then let's do it again. The derivative of 2x is just a 2. And then the derivative of the 2 is 0. And I claim we can stop right here. I don't need to go down any further. So let me erase this plus right there. We just need four rows. This is the first stop. When we see a zero in the D column, we stop. Once again, when we see the zero in the D column, we stop. And this is how we are going to read the answer from the DI table. We have the answer already. The answer is just going to be the product of the diagonals along with the sign on the side. First, we will have the product of positive x squared times negative one third cosine 3x. And let me write it down as negative one third x squared times cosine of 3x. And this is the first part of the answer already. And the second part is going to be this times that. Be sure you have this negative right here as well. You take negative 2x times negative 1 over 9. So you get positive 2 over 9. And then we have this x. And then we have the sine of 3x. At the end, we take this, multiply with that. Positive 2 
times 1 over 27. So we will first have plus 2 over 27 and then cosine of 3x. And guess what? We are done. Because you see, if you take 0, multiply with the next whatever this is, you get 0 anyways, right? That's why we stop when we see a 0 on the D column. This is the first stop. And then this is the answer already. At the end, of course, we put down a plus C. That's it. And check out the next one for the second stop. Here's the second example that's going to demonstrate the second step of using the DI method for integration by parts. Integral of x to the fourth power times ln x. So right away, we are going to select something to be differentiated and then something else to be integrated. This integral, we have to use the integration by parts for it. And then we also put down some plus minus plus minus. Be sure you alternate the signs. And let me just put that down for the setup. And now, let's select something to be integrated first. Shall we integrate ln x, for example? Well, if I put down ln x, what's the answer to the integral of ln x? Maybe we know from the antiderivative table, but to integrate ln x, we have to use integration by parts. So, I don't want to do an integration by part problem instead of an integration by part problem, right? I have no choice, but let's integrate x to the fourth power because we can totally do this. And then let me just differentiate ln x because to differentiate ln x is very easy. So let's see. I'm going to integrate this one time. Integral of x to the fourth power is one fifth x to the fifth power. And then when I differentiate ln x, we get one over x. That's all. Well, shall we keep going? If you keep going right here, this is not bad. It's pretty easy, right? However, if you keep differentiate 1 over x, unfortunately, this is not going to be 0 at all, right? It will never be 0. So first, you have to remember, we have to have a sense of danger when we're using the DI method. I'm going to stop right here because I know once I keep differentiate 1 over x, this is going to be pretty crazy, right? And this will never end. I don't know where to stop. Let me just stop right here in the first place. How's that? Second of all, and let's look at the product of 1 over x and x to the fifth power. We get x to the fourth power, right? And can we integrate x to the fourth power? Of course, and it's pretty easy as well, right? So in this case, we can stop right here. This is the second stop. Whenever we can integrate the product of a row, we stop. Once again, each row represents an integral. Whenever we can integrate the product of a row, we stop. So in this case, I don't need to go down any further. And then, remember, the product of the diagonal along with a sign like this, it's the part of the answer already. So we can write this down. The first part of the answer is positive ln x times 1 over 5 x to the fifth power, and we write this down first. 1 over 5 x to the fifth power, and then the ln x, like that. And then remember, the product of a row with a sign, it is still an integral. Just like the original one, you see x to the fourth power times ln x. And then it was a positive integral to begin with, isn't it? The product of this right here, it is still an integral. And first of all, it's a minus integral. Minus integral. Let me put this down right here for you guys. 1 over x times that. 1 over 5 x to the fifth power. And because this is an integral, we put down a dx. And what's this? Look at this right here is just 1 over 5. And then 1 over x and x to the fifth power is x to the fourth power. And earlier, I was just looking at the function part. Okay. Once again, whenever we can integrate the product of a row, we stop. This right here is the answer, the first part of the answer, 1 over 5 x to the fifth power, ln x. And then we just had to work out this integral. It's going to be minus the integral of 1 over 5 x to the fourth power. We add 1 to the fourth, which is 5, and divide it by 5. So we get 1 over 25. And then we have x to the fifth power. And we are done. 
go plus plus C. This is it, the second stop. And let's move on to the third stop now. This example is going to demonstrate the third stop of using the DI method for integration by parts. We have the integral of e to the x times sine x. So let's get it right away. We have d and i. We are going to pick something to be differentiated and something else to be integrated. And also, let's put down a sign on the side. Plus, minus, plus, minus. I don't know how many I need. Let me just put down a few to set up. OK, the functions are e to the x, and then we also have sine x. Which one should we put to be integrated? Can we easily integrate e to the x? Of course, right? Can we also easily integrate sine x? Yes. In fact, in this situation, it doesn't matter which one we pick to be integrated. It doesn't matter. Let me integrate sine x. And seriously, if you want to integrate e to the x right here, at the end, you and I will get the same answer. Okay? But then I chose sine x to be integrated, so of course I will differentiate e to the x. And let's get to work. Integrating sine x, we get negative cosine x. And what's the integral of negative cosine x? Well, we know integrating cosine x, we get positive sine x. But then this was negative originally, so we maintain the same negative sign. Once again, altogether, integrating negative cosine x, we will end up negative sine x. And let's do one more to practice. Integrating sine x is negative cosine. But then we have to account for this negative as well. Negative, negative, together we get positive cosine x. So be sure when you do this, integrating sine, cosine, things like that, do it carefully. Maybe you want to do it backwards to double check. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? The derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine. The derivative of negative cosine will end up positive sine. So we're good. And you see, seriously, this will never end. And it's just you know a lot of alternating uh, these things. So let's move to the d column. Let's differentiate e to the x. Well, it's just e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, and so on, so on, so on, so on, right? Now, here is the third stop. Third stop. Look at the original integral. We have e to the x times sine x. And pay attention to the function part. In this row, we have e to the x sine x, just a function part, OK? I don't care about the positive sign and negative sign. When the function part repeats, we stop. You see, e to the x sine x, it's the same as the original. So we stop right here on this row. I don't need to have this right here anymore. So let me just cross them out, OK? And now we can construct the answer part and also the integral part. Let's see. This is going to be, make sure you do the product of the diagonal along with this sign. We will first have positive e to the x times negative cosine x. So we will have negative e to the x cosine x. And this is the first part of the answer already. And the second part of the answer, we will take negative e to the x times negative sine x. So we get positive e to the x sine x. The product of the diagonals is the part of the answer already. Lastly, I'm going to multiply this third row. And then when we have, when we have the third row, it is still an integral. So look at this right here. This right here, it is still an integral. The green doesn't really stand out, but it's okay. Positive times negative, we have a negative integral e to the x sine x. And because this is the integral, of course, we put down dx at the end. So now you see, this is the original, and then we also have this right here on the other side, right? This is the function part for the answer already. And this is the style of doing such a problem. 
whenever we see the function pod repeat in a part of the row. We are going to add the integral of e to the x sine x dx on both sides. So let me do it right here as well. Plus integral e to the x sine x dx. This way, this and that will cancel each other out, right? So let's see on the left hand side. Originally I have one of them, but then I just add another one. So altogether I have two of this integral. Two integral e to the x sine x dx. And this is the same as, this is the function part for the answer, negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. Are we done? No, because we have this extra 2 we don't want. Originally, we don't have the 2 in front, right? But it's okay, because this means we have 2 times this integral. I just need to multiply this by 1 half. I just need to multiply this by 1 half. I just need to buy, multiply this by 1 half. I multiply everything by 1 half, so that this and that will cancel. And then I get the integral e to the x sine x dx, which we know it will be negative 1 half e to the x cosine x plus 1 half e to the x sine x. And then we are done. Plus c. And this is it. And this is the third situation. This is the third step when we are doing integration by parts, when we are using the di method. Okay? And hopefully, you guys like this video. If you like it, make sure you subscribe. That will make me really happy. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>